I spoke with Captain Shem Malquis, who is a visiting professor at the Florida Institute of Technology. And the big takeaway, he says, this is extremely rare. To have both engines fail is much more rare. Malquis compared the situation to when Sully Sullenberger landed a jet in the Hudson River after both engines went out in 2009. We do not train to a condition where both engines have failed and you cannot get them restarted again. Uh, it's absent in the checklist that the pilots use. But with what we saw on I-75, he says the jet turns into a glide. If one engine has failed, the airplane can fly. There's not a problem with that. So. And he says the best option was to land the plane on the interstate, hoping that cars can quickly react. The interstate was probably the clearest place where it was least likely to cause major damage landing in the direction that traffic is moving. He says the investigation will be difficult because of the plane's owner. And unlike airlines, most corporate operators really aren't equipped to really manage that type of uh, situation. So this is going to be uh, a challenge. He says the investigators will first want to know the cause for both engines to go out and will most likely start looking at the jet fuel's history. It looked like the pilots did the very best they could with a very bad situation. Reporting Ella Rhodes, Fox 4.